Hello, this is Thomas K4SWL, and if you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And uh, today's a little different. I'm about to do an activation here at Lake James State Park and had kind of a last-minute thought. Um, I've been asked a lot of times if I would show what's in my pack, how I pack things uh, when I go out to do an activation. And I appreciate that because I am a certified pack geek. I love gear and packs and that sort of thing. And uh, I actually look up videos myself showing how people pack various kits uh, together. Uh, so I don't think I've ever done one of these videos to my knowledge. Um, and I really need to start doing them for the different kits I have because I have a bunch of different ways I do uh, packing uh, for people who are interested in that sort of thing. If this doesn't interest you, it's okay to go ahead and skip to the next video or whatever. But um, So I just happened to think about this right before I set up today and I uh, thought I'd kind of go through... Um, what's in this pack today. Uh, today I brought with me my GORUCK GR1 uh, backpack. Now, I said I am a pack geek, and I'm pretty serious about that. I will spend uh, insane amounts of money on uh, backpacks. Um, so, GORUCK is one of those companies <laughs> that I like to support. Um, they are based in the United States. They do all their menu... well... They do all their design work in the United States. They used to do all their manufacturing in the United States. Nowadays, they do outsource quite a bit of it um, to one of their factories, I think, in Vietnam. Um, this pack is the GORUCK GR1 USA. I bought this when it was manufactured in the United States, and uh, I like the color scheme of it. I got it on sale. I'm thinking I got it on sale for something over $200. Uh, these packs now probably sell for well over $300 if made in the United States. Um, I don't stay current with all of GORUCK stuff, uh, like I do some other pack companies, so I'm not sure what they manufacture in the U.S. anymore and what they don't. But I do love their packs because they're just incredibly, incredibly rugged. They're just, uh, the stitching and seaming's incredible. They um, will take a complete beating, and they will not fail in the field, um, which I love. I also like this particular pack because in a normal year, uh, not during a pandemic, I will do uh, quite a bit of uh, air travel. And this pack is just the right size to um, be considered a personal carry-on item with a lot of airlines. So if I'm flying one of the cheap airlines uh, to go somewhere, um, I can consider this a personal carry-on and not have to pay any baggage fees at all. They'll usually include this. And I can pack for a week in this very, very easily. In fact, I can probably easily, easily pack for two weeks in this. Um, I am a pretty minimalist traveler when it comes to this sort of thing, though. But you've probably seen in other videos that I use this pack a lot for summits on the air activations, for park activations. I like it because it's compact. Um, it's not super lightweight because it's made of a really, really uh, strong uh, Cordura material, but it's um, waterproof. Uh, so um, it's not an issue if it rains or anything. These um, covers keep the zippers nice and uh, dry. There are molly straps on it, so I can um, strap things to the outside if I feel like doing it, uh, which I do sometimes. Um, another pack that you see a whole lot is my Go Ruck, or my um, Red Ox Sea Ruck uh, pack. I do use it for Parks on the Air um, a lot, and I have used it for soda activations. Red Ox is another company I love. In fact, they're just like my favorite backpack company. Um, and I'll do a video about some of their stuff here uh, soon. But this is what I have today. And this isn't actually a typical, <laughs> this is not typically how I pack it out. And the reason why is I never intended to do a, an activation today. I had to do an overnight trip uh, to visit my parents. And uh, uh, so I really kind of packed for that. And at the last moment thought, you know, let me take some radio gear just in case things work out. And fortunately they did work out. Something I had to do today, um, I was able to rearrange it to do it very early in the morning, which freed up a couple of hours in the afternoon. And that's the reason I'm out here at Lake James right now about to do a park activation. So um, I'll show you how I packed this out and try to show you some of the bits and pieces I have in here uh, without <laughs> geeking out too badly. For one thing, what I really love about these packs is for travel and for um, radio stuff, is that they will open fully. So um, I can I can have them wide open um, like this and pull everything out of it. This makes it really easy to get to everything in here. So this is not all radio gear this time. Um, I'll kind of show you each component. Um, first of all, this is my um, Ride in Rain logging pad and everything. This is my uh, Google Pixel 3, which I use a lot to record videos because it makes it a little easier for me to um, 
uh, upload them a little bit later. I have issues uploading videos uh, because at home I have super, super low bandwidth. Um, so that's the reason my videos come out like <laughs> once a week. It's because it's when I'm able to get the bandwidth to uh, upload them. I love this. This is weather. This is weatherproof, and I have a right and rain pad in here. I don't use it unless I think I'm going to be rained on or snowed on or something. Um, I usually use little Muji um, pads in here, and also uh, these uh, mechanical pencils, which I keep links to all this stuff in all of my activation videos. I uh, keep a spare power cord in here for my uh, camera. I don't know what that tie is doing in here. I think it fell in there. Let's see. I'll try to go through the radio gear first. Here is my speaker wire antenna. It's what I brought along this time. To be honest, if I really wanted to save space, I would have brought my pack antenna, something like that that's a lot lighter or smaller. But this is what I decided to bring at the last moment. Again, I didn't think I'd be doing an activation today. Um, let's see. This is my... Um, uh, Arbor Storyline made by Weaver, and this this uh, particular pack, everything in this is made in the United States as well. And I should say, I have nothing against international trade. I have nothing against buying things from other countries at all. But I'm a big believer in trying to support your domestic economy too. So whatever country you live in, consider trying to buy things from within your own country. And we're fortunate enough with packs and things like that, the United States has some of the best uh, pack companies in the world, uh, which is why I like to support their stuff. So all of my packs, all of them, except maybe I don't know about this particular low pro that I got with uh, my Elecraft gear, everything else is made in the United States. Um, but this Weaver uh, throw line, this is what I'll use to put my antenna up today. I'm looking for a replacement for this when I have a super compact kit. This is fine, but um, I'm even looking for one that maybe have half the size of this that I could put enough throw line in for most of my um, antennas, like this speaker wire antenna. This is only 28 and a half feet long on the radiator side, so I don't have to carry all this uh, with me. But um, yeah, if you have any ideas, let me know. I do like using this throw line because this poly line does not tangle and it works beautifully. And I also have a 12 ounce weight in here, I think. Uh, so that's uh, what I like to use. Let me try here. It is 12 ounces, yes. And I really like this Weaver company, by the way. I've read enough reviews of people using kind of knockoff brands and finding that like sometimes their little bag, the weighted bag just explodes when it hits the ground. <laughs> so that's the reason I buy this and I like it. Um, this is my low pro pack that actually I bought at the same time I bought my Elecraft KX2. I can't remember if I bought this directly from Elecraft or not. I think Elecraft these days, because low pro may not even make these anymore, but Elecraft pays to have them made because they work so beautifully with the um, KX2. So I keep my KX2 in here. There's actually I, this little compartment I keep a mic in. I actually sometimes have my Pactena uh, in here and a little two-foot RG316 um, patch cable. Um, I usually keep that, or actually it's a little bit longer than that, what am I saying? I'll keep the two-foot one in here. That's the one I use for my ATU, which I don't need for this. Um, I think if this one's like a 12 or 15-foot um, cable, but it easily fits in here. That RG316 is so small. And keep in mind with the KX2, you don't even have to have a microphone. It has a built-in microphone you can use, but here's an extra set of BC uh, binding posts. I like to have this so that if something goes wrong with my antenna, I can just build one out of any kind of wire I have around and it'll work. These are my KXPD2 paddles uh, that attach to the uh, KX2. I always carry a set of earphones in each one of my pack kits. This is actually the cable that you connect the KX2 to the KXPA100 which is an amplifier I'm planning to sell because <laughs> I just don't ever use it. Um, in this top pack, I keep, I've got a little barrel connector in here. I've got a PL, oh, well, an SO239 to BNC male adapter. I have a little uh, antenna line or antenna connector here for one of the verticals I have. And then I have like a right angle BNC to BNC uh, connector just to sometimes make it work better with whatever antenna system I have. And that's what I keep in this pack. But again, I can actually carry everything in here I need other than a throw line if I really want to. Now, the rest of this stuff actually isn't necessarily radio related. I need to double check. I can't remember, but um, this, again, I was packing for an overnighter. So uh, these two things are made by Tom Ben. Um, I can't remember the name of this particular thing, but this is what I keep a book in. So if I'm reading when I 
uh, travel. I like to keep paperbacks in here. It keeps them nice and keeps them from getting all messed up in my bag. Um, so I like this for that. This Tanbin bag here actually has my toiletries kit and um, basically everything I need, like personal items. So this is my toiletries kit here. These are my Bose um, Quiet Comfort uh, noise canceling headphones, which I like to use a lot when I'm traveling. And I carry just a little bit of clothing in the bottom of this. I like this Tom Ben bag. I think this is called a, I think it's called a sidekick. I like it because it, it acts like a sort of a, um, a packing cube, but you can actually attach um, something to it and use it as an over the shoulder bag if you need to. And it also has a little front uh, pocket here that I don't use really that often. Um, I also keep a clipboard in here. And in the case of the Elecraft KX2, this actually serves as um, my, sometimes when I'm in the field, this serves as my table for operating. I put the KX2 up here and my logbook down here and I just kind of use the whole thing. That's my whole table and I like it. Oh, and I just realized that my green rubber band just died. Oh, those of you who've been watching this channel for a long time, yeah, it's, it's time to cry about that. Um, and if my buddy Eric is watching this, maybe he's not, he'll notice that actually I stole this from him. He has McFadden on the back of it. <laughs> we have the exact same clipboards and I must have gone with him on an activation years ago and ended up keeping this. So Eric, I owe you a clipboard. But if you're not watching this video, you're not gonna get it. Um, then they, uh, the GORUCK has um, this in, these internal pockets on the front panel. And in this one, this is just, the only thing I have in this one right now is my uh, MacBook uh, charge cable. Um, up in the top, in here, let me make sure the camera's working fine, yes. What do I have in here? I haven't looked in here. <laughs> so, all of this is actually how I pack things. I did not prepare this at all. The only thing I did right before I started the video is I opened it up because I needed the tripod out. And I actually keep a tripod in here too that's not being shown because it's being used right now. This is my little Garmin InReach Mini, which I keep in this pack because I use this pack so often for soda. So this is my satellite messaging thing. Here are a couple of uh, RX bars. The blueberry kind is my favorite. These are great kind of good for you protein bars that are, they don't have that kind of grainy weirdness that some protein bars have. I really like them. I also keep a couple of cable ties. These are just little black cable ties in here. Um, those always come in handy. Um, on the front, this is my high visibility vest, and I use this anytime I'm in or near a game land. You really should always have these for game lands. Um, let's see what else I have in here. I hope there's nothing embarrassing in here. Um, this is one of my, um, uh, <laughs> this is actually a map that a friend gave us um, uh, for Pisgah National Forest. And I like to keep paper maps with me when I'm hiking, um, because if something happens to your GPS or something happens to your phone or whatever, you know, you've got you know, real maps with lines of elevation and everything else. So, um, these are super important and I always carry one with me. Uh, this is a little first aid kit. Actually, it's an extra first aid kit. I have, this one's the one I normally use, which is made for, um, hiking and that sort of thing. And I'll buy these, uh, kits sometimes, but I often pack my own first aid kits. In fact, this is one from REI. I got on sale for like three bucks. And I go ahead and put my own things in here uh, when I want to. This is actually sort of an extra kit. Never leave home without a first aid kit. I don't care where you're going. I have been, I have used my first aid kits more times than I'd like to mention being a father with two active uh, daughters. I mean, I've had, my daughters have stepped on nails. Um, they've gotten stung. Uh, they've gotten really big cuts and things like that. And having this Having a first aid kit nearby is just so incredibly nice. And and frankly, if you're doing a soda activation and you're with someone else, it's always great to have a first aid kit in case they need it too. I also, for soda stuff, I keep this little um, kind of an emergency pack here. So I can start a fire if I want to. I've got a whistle if I need it. Um, and it just has a bunch of extra stuff in it. This was, again, something I got basically free from REI off of a, by combining coupons and, and stuff like that that I had. So... Um, I like keeping it in here. It's waterproof, um, and I like it. Um, I also carry, I need this less in the summer, but this is a space blanket. It's just a cheapo space blanket that I got off of Amazon. Uh, we bought like, I think it came in a pack of five or six. These are great. These are just mylar. They work for a lot of different reasons. I mean, a lot of different ways. 
uh, but they will keep you warm if you need in a pinch. They'll kind of keep your body heat in, uh, but they also can serve for a lot of other things, including, you know, keeping you dry. Um, and actually, this is something that you should consider keeping, travel toilet tissue. And uh, you should keep that with you um, and also have something that you can dig if you need to. And um, I've got a multi-tool that I can use for that. But I mean, let's face the facts. If you're hiking and you're going to spend three quarters of a day hiking in the woods, nature may call while you're out. Um, probably more information you care to know. I also keep this, um, what is this called? A hero clip. I keep this hero clip with me. I like this because I can use this to hold my bag on a tree. I have used this to hold the ends of antennas before. Um, it comes in handy for a lot of different reasons. And uh, so I like this. I like this. I either keep it on my handle up here. I also sometimes when I use the uh, Chameleon Impasse Light for a soda activation, I'll um, uh, use this clip to actually hold the um, vertical uh, telescoping uh, bit into my pack because basically it doesn't quite fit in the pack. It's a little too long for it. And uh, so yeah, I'll clip this back. There's only one other thing I can think of on here. I know you get started on my activation soon. And that is in the back, and this is the cool thing about these GORUCKS, is the laptop compartment. So this is my MacBook uh, Air uh, that I use for blogging and, and that sort of thing. And it's got a really nice kind of bulletproof uh, part of the, of the pack to hold it in. The only negative I would say with this, the MacBook Air is really thin. If you had a thick laptop and you had it in here, there could be a lot of pressure because this is a pretty tight space. But I really do like this. Um, makes it easy to take stuff along and I don't worry about my back, my um, laptop being harmed. Uh, so that's basically it. That's what I keep in this particular uh, pack. And um, I haven't weighed this or anything. When I go for a soda activation, I, I keep a minimal kit when I go out, so um, I'll pay a little more attention to the weight. In this case, of course, this was mainly being used to um, carry my clothes and that sort of thing, and I went ahead and packed the radio in it in case I got the opportunity like I have today to uh, play radio. If I needed to save space, of course, I could um, always just carry my KX2 and the Bear Essentials uh, in here, including just some fishing line and a weight, and that wouldn't take up a lot of space uh, for doing an activation. Or just carry my KX2 and the AX1 antenna, which really is in a pack only that big, a little small Maxpedition pack, um, and that would work too. I could have easily brought that today. But anyway, here we go. If you got any questions, feel free to comment. I'm really curious if you're also into, um, you know, packs and that sort of thing. Maybe it's just me. There are some things I will spend insane amounts of money on. Um, radio gear, packs, and coffee. Um, <laughs> anything dealing with coffee. I do like, I am, I do like good coffee. Um, so I'll pay uh, some uh, crazy money on some of those things. And I think we're all that way. We, there are certain things we like and that we'll fork out money for. And I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to spend, you know, $300 on a pack like this. Um, but for me, it's worth every penny. And, and one other thing that's important to me when I travel, um, I don't want there to be any chance that my pack fails in the field. Like when I'm out doing something, I don't want it to fail. Oh, a nice little uh, bumblebee's decided to stop by. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but he's on the back of my pack. Um, so um, I don't blame you if you don't spend that kind of money. There's some great, great manufacturers of backpacks like... Um, um, Oh, if I can think of the name, I can't think of the names of them off my head because I don't actually uh, buy that uh, many myself. But you can go to like REI. Um, I like all of their gear. I like their own branded gear. Um, there's one called the Porter, and I'm trying to think of the name of the company. I tried one of those out one time and uh, really like it. I, I just can't. My mind's going blank right now uh, for backpack companies. My favorite companies, though, that I like are um, GORUCK. I especially like Red Ox, and I like Tom Ben. Um, also, if you want something kind of more tactical, I really like um, Spec Ops brand, uh, which is, they make their stuff in Texas, and I've been very, very pleased with their equipment. It is very tactical, though, and the packs tend to be a little bit bigger, though they have a few kind of EDC-sized ones as well. Um, so, yeah, there's our Bumblebee friend. You can see him here. Um, there we go. Um, 
So anyway, um, I'd love to know what you carry. And in, in fact, if you ever wanted to submit maybe some photos or something of how you pack out your gear, I'd love to post that on qrpr.com. I'll try to remember to make a post for this video as well on qrpr.com. And if I do that, it'll be in the uh, description below. I'll put a link in there and it'll have a link to hopefully everything I've got here. I may not have every first aid kit and everything linked to it, but all the main gear that I use for my field stuff. So anyway, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Thank you very much. And seven threes.